Hi everyone, hope you're well. It's coming to summer soon, so I'm really happy that you're all doing well. So today we are going to be reading a book called Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls, A Hundred Tales of Extraordinary Women. So I'm not going to read this all because a hundred's a very big number. So we are going to be talking about one of the people I have picked is Queen Elizabeth. Once upon a time there was a king who wanted to leave, to leave his kingdom to a son. When his wife gave birth to a daughter, King Henry VIII was so mad that he left her, sent the child away and married another woman. He believed that only a man would be able to rule the country after he died, and he was delighted when his new wife gave birth to a boy, Edward. Henry's daughter, Elizabeth, grew up bright and brilliant girl, with stunning red hair and a fiery temper. Edward was only nine when his father died and he became king. A few years later, he also became ill and died. And his sister Mary became queen. Mary thought that Elizabeth was plotting against her. So she locked Elizabeth up in the Tower of London. Some of you may have actually been and seen what it looks like. One day, the tower guards burst into her cell. The queen is dead, they shouted. And then they fell to their knees in front of Elizabeth. In front. Elizabeth instantly went from being a prisoner in the tower to the country's new queen. Elizabeth's court was home to musicians, poets, painters, playwriters. The most famous was William Shakespeare, whose play Elizabeth adored. She wore sumptuous gowns decorated with pearls and lace, and ne she never married. She valued her own independence as highly as that of her own country. Her people loved her dearly. And when she died, Londoners took over the streets to mourn the greatest queen they had ever had. And then here it says the date, September the 7th, 1533 to March 24th, 1603. So, and here is a picture. So, you can see down below there'll be a video linked all to do with Queen Elizabeth. So, the next one I have actually chosen to do is, I've got to find it. Jane Austen. Does anybody know who Jane Austen is? Your mummies and daddies might know. So Jane Austen is a writer. Once upon a time in the English countryside, there was a girl who loved books more than anything else. There was nowhere that Jane would rather be than curled up on a sofa in her father's library with her nose in a book. So it just means reading. She could get so engrossed in the stories that sometimes she even argued with the characters as though they talked back. Jane and her seven siblings would put on plays and charades to amuse themselves and their parents. When she was still very young, she started to write her own stories and used to read them out to her sister, Cassandra, to write her own stories, to make her laugh. Jane's writing, Jane's writing was like Jane herself, bright, inventive, witty and sharp. To her, every detail counted. How a couple squabbled, how a man walked, what maids said to each other... These were all clues revealing people's characters. Jane jotted down everything in her notebook, ready to use in her novel. At that time, girls were expected to get married, but Jane didn't want to get married, so she never did. Oh, Lizzie, do anything rather than marry without affection, she wrote in one of her novels. Jane Austen came to be one of the most famous writers in the history of English literature. You can still visit this beautiful cottage in the little village where she used to sit, writing at a small desk, looking out of a window in, into the flower garden. <clears throat> and again, it has the dates. December 16, 1775 to July 18, 1875. And here is a picture of Jane Austen. So again, link down below, there'll be a video linking to all things about Jane Austen, maybe some more facts. So the last one I'm actually going to read, some of you might know a bit more or you might have heard your parents talk about it. And this person is called Michelle Obama. And she, was, she is married to the old president called Barack Obama. So it says here that she was a lawyer and the first lady. Once upon a time, there was a girl who was always afraid. Her name was Michelle Robinson and she lived in a one-bedroom apartment in Chicago with her family. Maybe I'm not smart enough, maybe I'm not good enough, she worried. And her mother would say, if it can't be done, you can do it. 
Anything is possible, said her dad. Michelle worked hard. Sometimes teachers told her she would not aim too high because her grades were not that good. Some people said she would never achieve something big because she was just a black girl from the south side of Chicago. But Michelle chose to listen to her parents. Anything is possible, she thought. So she graduated from Harvard and became a lawyer at a big firm. One day, her boss asked her to mentor a young lawyer. His name was Barack Hussein Obama. They fell in love and got married a few years later. One day, Barack told her he wanted to become president of the United States. At first, she thought he was crazy. But then she remembered, if it can be done, you can do it. So she quit her job and helped him on his campaign. Barack won the election twice and Michelle became the first African-American first lady of the United States. No one is born, no one is born smart. You become smart through hard work, is her motto. And it says here, born January 17, 1964, United States of America. So she's still alive. And here's a picture. Now, this book is all about amazing women and things they have done. So can you maybe have a chat with your parents about things that you learned from just listening to these stories? So I learned something we always say in school, a bit like Michelle Obama, is never to give up and to always do it. And it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope to see you all soon, sometime before summer, fingers crossed. Bye, guys.